We're going to start with a little bit of a, a review back to yesterday and piecewise for a moment. So for those of you that weren't here yesterday, this is kind of your insight to things before you hopefully go back or either jot the notes down that we've got posted or watch the video, kind of see some things. So what I want to do here on this piecewise practice from yesterday is put out a couple of reminders on things. We'll do a couple. So when you're looking at the number that's inside the parentheses, that is the x value you're working with. So that 8 is the x. You're like, okay, what I'm going to do with that 8 is I'm going to look at these three inequalities. That 8 is only going to make one of them true. So for instance, if I plug in 8 here, is 8 less than negative 6? No. Is 8 between negative 6 and positive 1? No. Running out of room. Is 8 greater than 1? Yes, this is true. So we slide over to the expression that's with it, and we're going to replace the x with our 8. But you figure this out based on this. This is always the first place you're going to go. And I can either plug that directly into the calculator. I'm old school. I like to actually see my work. So I fill it in that way. So you're like, hmm, Hardy, I don't know. Okay, let's play with, oh, let's see which one looks like fun. Five. Might as well keep doing odds. Okay, so negative one half. And we talked yesterday too, if the whole greater than, less than thing is driving you crazy and it's like you're like, eh, I don't really like that that much. What you can do is make yourself a quick number line and be like, okay, negative one half right here. Is it less than negative six, which is over here? It's, it's not, okay? Anything that's left is, is less than. Is this between negative six and positive one. Yeah, it's in between those. So I slide over to here and I'm gonna take the expression and anytime I see an X, I'm gonna replace it with the number in parentheses. Now that one, I don't even think I wanna play with just using my noggin. I think I wanna use the calculator, which I did not grab one. So. So when I'm going to put it in the calculator, we know how the calculator can get picky with its minuses and negatives. So let's try this out. Inside the parentheses, that's a negative. So that's this one. So negative 1 divided by 2 minus, that's this one, that's the minus. You notice it's a little bit longer than the negative was. Negative little negative one half whoops i don't want two of those don't want two of those squared let me make sure because that was a lot of ones and negatives two times negative one half minus negative one half squared okay oof done or i can do math enter enter i probably will have my answer is negative five fourths but if you put the decimal i'm not going to be upset but that's the biggest part up here in the top. Take that number in the parentheses, see which one of these it fits into, because that's the expression that you're going to substitute in for. It's not just take your pick or do all three. We don't want to do that either. We want to work those in. 
So that was part of what we were doing. The other part, I just want to look at one thing on the back quick. Okay, let's do that. If, let's say you're doing number seven, and we chatted about how we really haven't messed with graphing lines yet, and we're not worrying about domain and range. We literally just want to graph these. So, I look at this, if x is less than one, where's my, well, there's my number line, it's up there. Well, I don't want it up there, I want it here. So, make me a new one. Okay, Hardy, what are you doing and why are you doing this? Okay, both of these lines are going to start at 1. Okay, so for this one, we're starting at 1. If x is less than 1, notice the arrow is pointing left. If I start going left from 1, I get to 0, and then I get to negative 1. Those are the three values that I want to plug in and get an answer out. Now, to be honest, I don't think I need to even go to y equals for this. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to plug in 1, A. And get my y out. Okay? Plug in 0 for my x. get my y out. So we got our x values from here and just kind of following the number line to the left, kind of like the arrow does. And I got these three points. Okay, so what am I going to do with them? The first one is the one we got to decide on the open versus closed circle. So reminder, open circle if it's just less than or greater than we're going to use an open circle if it's or equal to if it has the line underneath it we're going to fill that one in so this is an open circle so i go to one one two three and i make an open circle for my other two points I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to plot those with regular dots. The reason for that is when I go to make my line now, you go from the big dot, or in this case, the open dot, and just to connect the dots away from it. It's not the whole line. It's just that piece. And so I've got to do that same thing with this one, starting at 1, whatever it tells me in the if part, that's where I have to start. And since now I'm going to the right, I'm following the arrow, 1, 2, 3. And plug them in. 1 minus 7 is negative 6. 2 minus 7, and again, you can plug them into the calculator, is negative 5. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Again, if you're not sure ever, just pop, punch them in. Okay, so there's my 6, my 5, and my negative 4. This time, for this one, the arrow has a line under it. It's or equal to. It's going to be a big old closed dot at one. Big old closed dot at one negative six. Little dot at two negative five. And one, two, three. Little dots. And always connect from the big dot to little dots. That's all we're doing. We're just doing the graphs, figuring out some values, making sure our arrows are going the right directions. 
And if, and actually, let me do one other thing here. One other thing before I get into review mode. I might do these separately. I think I'm going to. If you're dealing with big pieces, okay, which is going to happen sometimes, these, I'm going to do these separately. But we're going to do it the same way. This tells me, hey, Hardy, start at negative one. Where'd my little number line go? I need it back. Okay. Start at negative one and start going to the left. That tells me what direction to go. So that'd be negative two. And if I kept going, negative three. If I want, I can go to my calculator and be like, all right, negative one plus four. Negative 2 plus 4, negative 3 plus 4. <clears throat> I got my three points. Remember to look at your arrow. That first one at negative 1, open circle, because it's just less than. There's no arrow under. So there's my first point. Make it nice and big. Two, one, two. One, two, three, one. And always connect from the big dot to the little ones. The only time we don't do it that way with coming up with our numbers is if there's an in-between where they give you two numbers. If they're nice enough to do that, those are the only two numbers we're going to use. We're going to do negative 1, and we're going to do positive 2. And since they both have arrows next to them, they get open circles. You're like, wait a minute, Hardy. Where, where am I supposed to stick the negative 1 and the 2? There's like a number here. That's kind of weird. If there's no place to stick the x... That number that's there is the number you use for both of them. <laughs> so for this one, I'm going to have negative 1, 5, and I'm going to have 2, 5. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we connect the dots. So really, this is just a straight substitution that we're doing on all of these. So one last one. I already started two. Follow the arrow. Okay, two and go to the right. Two, three, four. Oh, fractions. Okay. I'm going to get a little help this time. Negative one half times two plus one zero. Negative one half in parentheses times three plus one is negative point five. One more time. Negative, whoops, not parentheses. Negative one half times four plus 1 is negative 1. Little line under my arrow this time. Filled in dot at 2, 0. Nice and big there. 1, 2, 3, and just a half, just up a little bit. Oh, down, down, Hardy, down a little bit. Negative 0.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. Connect the dots. The idea doesn't change except for that stinker in between her. That one has to change a little bit. But that's all we're doing on the graphing part of this. We're trying to keep life simple. Now, as we turn, I'm not going to make you wait while I switch up videos here. I think I'm just going to run with this. We'll see how this goes for me. So this, because we've had two quizzes so far, 
This preview takes us through the same stuff we dealt with on quiz one. Tomorrow, the one we do will follow us through on the parts we did on quiz two. So, again, with these, I can use the calculator. I can go through and do my own thing. So here's what I'm going to suggest. I want to do one of them. I want to do number two because I have a feeling I know what's going to happen if I don't. So with these, do each part separately on its own. If you're not comfortable doing the math in your head, okay, four minus negative six and hit enter. Don't try to be a hero and do the whole thing. 5 plus negative 2 plus 3 minus 1. It's 5. Then just divide them. Keep it simple. On just about everything here, you can just type in things as you see them and let the calculator help. Probably a good idea. Evaluate. Ooh, I see an absolute value. I want to play with this. So use M is 5 and P is 4. Okay. So I substitute 4 in for P, 5 in for M. I think we can do, we don't need a calculator. We got this. What's 4 times 4? 16. And the absolute value just means it's coming out positive, okay? I don't need to do a button calculator press for that. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Just add them up. You can put the stuff in the calculator as you go, but I really think you'd be okay with those, even if you didn't. Uh, equations, okay, let's play, let's play with one of these. We'll just stay over here. Now with these, you're going to have two equations on each one of them because that's what absolute value does. So reminder, first one, this is the, this is the KISS method. Keep it on the first one. Don't change a thing. Just lose the bars. Second one we're going to switch the sign of the answer. There's no arrows to flip. And once you get that done, we're just gonna do the two-step equations. Sometimes you'll get whole numbers, sometimes you're gonna get fractions, but this is where we can work on some of that detail stuff that's been the struggle so far. Like here, that's not minusing four from n. That's negative four times m. So the opposite of multiply is to divide. And negative times negative is positive. Little stuff. And the reason I say little stuff is if I start to see big stuff, you'll see me running my mouth about it all the time. I haven't run my mouth about that stuff yet because it's been mainly detail things like doing negative divided by negative and thinking it's positive still things like that That stuff's easily fixable got to remember with absolute value there's going to be two equations got it got it got it got it but again you have places it's like your notes that remind you of these things still not trying to say nothing just just saying um do I want to do this? I do want to say one thing here when we get to the back. I'm not going to do the whole problem, but I, I do want to mention something. Before you split these in two, your absolute value has to be on a side by itself. Otherwise, one of your answers guaranteed is going to be wrong. So I'm multiplying this absolute value by 10. I'm going to divide by 10. You're like, Hardy, I'm going to get a decimal. That's okay. I'm going to get a decimal. But now this is alone. Now I can split it into my two expressions. Keep it on the first one.
Just change the sign on the second. I just said I wasn't going to do all this, and I did. Um, what's the opposite of dividing by 5? Multiply. When I multiply to both sides, reminder, because I've seen this happen on both quizzes so far, this 5's only job is to cancel out the denominator. Don't make this 5n. Punch that in my calculator. Punch that in my calculator. Bam. Little stuff. Simplify. There's no equal signs here. I'm not going to get P equals. No equals. Doesn't say solve. If there's parentheses, do that first. So multiply that 3 through. To both terms, not just the first one. Then if there's anything alike, there's no equals, no opposites here. Just put them together. 6 plus 6 is 12. There is no other plain old number. I cannot go further. This has P. This doesn't. It cannot be 15P. Not allowed. So just a little simplify. Equations. Let's see here. Trying to touch a little bit on everything. Um, let's chat the difference between 15 and 16. So 15, my n terms are on the same side of the equals. Don't do opposites, just put them together. 1 and negative 7 is negative 6. And once they're together, my job becomes to get them alone. Start doing opposites now to get that stuff to the other side. So our n term is alone. And one last shout out. This is multiply. The minus is not in between your terms. Okay, that's minus. This is multiply. And there's an equals, so now I can actually solve something. And so the difference between these, there's my other pen, is that now the P's are on opposite sides of the equals. So now I do have to do an opposite if I'm getting them together. It doesn't matter which side. And once we're together, we're working on getting that 2p alone. We're starting to do opposites. We got a couple. Once we clean up, once we get all our variables together, now it's just undo things, undo things, undo things until we get there. It's kind of hard to believe we've done this much, this many different topics already this, this early, but we have. And I think, what if I got, oh, of course I forgot that I have fractions. Oh, fractions. Okay, fractions. Reminder. We're going to take care of them fractions. Multiply your denominators together. But notice only the ones that are different. I have 7 here twice. I don't have to do it twice. So 7 times 2 is 14. Here's how, watch, watch how quickly these go away. 14 times 31 divided by 7 in parentheses. 62 with my K. Do it again. 14. 18 divided by 7 in parentheses. 36. Okay. Yep, one more time, even to the other side. And just like that, fractions are gone. Same side of the equals. 
just put them together. I don't think this one's coming out nice. Nope. So we'll take we'll take five halves or two point five. We're happy with it. So fractions again, nothing bad. Nothing bad. Proportions, then we're almost there. We're cross multiplying. Either direction, it does not matter which direction you go. As long as we're going cross, not side to side here. So since we've got parentheses on the right side, we're going to go there first. And I notice once I distribute that I got B's on both sides. I don't, I don't like that. I want to get them together. Since I just have B's on the left, I'm going to go ahead and get them all there. And again, the minus is not in between them. It's over here. So that is going to be divide, not subtract. That gets me there. And no, the, the test itself will not be as long as this and then a whole other thing. It's not going to be like 50 questions. That'd be crazy. All right, last one. Let's see here. Which one looks like the most fun 24 does? Okay, solve for A. First problem. A is in the denominator. That's not good. So we got to get it out of there. What's the opposite of dividing something by A? Multiply. So this is going to look weird, but we're going to do it. We're going to multiply both sides by A. So the A's cancel on the left. And now my equation looks like this. You're like, well, that didn't really make things look any better. Hardy, should I distribute? Nope. I want to solve for A. It's right there by itself. That's an okay thing. What am I doing to it? I'm multiplying it by all this stuff. That's what the parentheses mean. So to undo multiplying by all that stuff, it looks weird, but I'm telling you, we're going to divide by it. That just got A by itself, which is what I want to do. I'll admit, literal equations are not the easiest thing to do. You've got to stay focused on the fact that, hey, this is like solving any other equation except there's letters there instead of numbers. i got to just keep doing opposites. Hey, I'm multiplying x by k. i got to divide. Hey, I'm solving for x. I need to add m to the other side. Okay. And just not let yourself get fooled into thinking that it's harder than it is because it looks weird. Okay? So play with some of these other ones that are on this first part of the preview. Again, the answers are on Classroom on the main page. So you can kind of try them and check as you go along to make sure it's going